Welcome back. We're talking about how to get a job in game design. And actually today is not very specific to game design. We're going to talk about cover letters and portfolio review. It's more like just how to get a job in general, useful stuff. Although I highly recommend you watch the previous videos in this section because we're going to build on that material. So as a review, uh, the recruiter is trying to match resumes to job postings and it's your job to do everything you can to make that process of matching uh, easy. So we're going to build on that. I highly recommend you go back and watch those videos. It's in a playlist on my channel. Okay, now that you've done that, one last thing before we get started, which is that I'm going to answer some viewer questions at the end of this video. And please, if you have any questions, love answering them. Uh, just go ahead and put them, you know, down in the comments place. You, you know how it works. Go ask some questions. Okay, let's talk about cover letters. If you're like me, this is one of the worst parts of applying for a job because I just get so introspective when I'm writing a cover letter. I don't know what to write. I don't like bragging about myself, you know. Uh, the whole thing seems so futile. But the good news is that I did over 100 interviews when I worked at Amazon Game Studios, and I never saw a single cover letter. Uh, I don't even know whether they collected cover letters. I think most companies that do collect a cover letter, your cover letter is not even likely to get past the recruiter. So let me make it, let me just make it straightforward and simple for you. Something that you can write that's risk-free, easy to write, absolutely no problem. Uh, and then I'm going to show you a cover letter that I've written in the past that is basically the format of all the cover letters that I write now. Um, and cover letters will never be a problem for you anymore. So my cover letters use this formula these days. Okay, Dear company I'm applying for. That's the first thing. Number two, thank you so much for considering my application. A very short line about how I appreciate their company or have I played their games before or something like that. Okay, one sentence. Three, I've noticed that your company is looking for, this role is looking for someone like X. Well, today's your lucky day because I am perfectly like X. And so you write that out in that line. And then next, I've also noticed that your company is looking for someone like Y. Well, it's double your lucky day because as you'll see on my resume, I have a ton of experience in Y. And Z, you're looking for Z, and look at all this experience I have in Z. And as an added bonus, I also have these proficiencies that you're interested in. And so, really, when I saw a job posting that was so well matched towards my uh, abilities, I couldn't not apply. Like, it's so perfect, you know? This is, this is all you have to say. The job posting says X, and then this is I'm X, and the job posting said Y, and I'm Y. You really just got to drill it home for that recruiter. These are the points that I think will make me strong in your job. So the recruiter, if they even read it at all, your goal is that they look at it and they see, oh, I, I was pretty convinced by the resume that this person might be appropriate for the job, but this person just uh, brought it home for me. Easy, one, two, three points. I have no doubt in my mind now. I'm definitely going to forward them to the hiring manager. That's it. All right. So now we're going to go look at a cover letter that I've written before. Uh, let's go do that now. All right. So here it is. Uh, here's a recent cover letter I sent about a year and a half ago. I have redacted the name of the company involved just to protect the innocent here. And full disclosure, uh, I did end up getting a callback from this studio, but I didn't proceed through the rest of the offer um, because I realized there were some logistical things that would prevent me from actually taking a you know an offer. Um, but you know the point of the cover letter is just to get you to the next step, and it managed to accomplish that. So I think this is a good example of something that we can look at. So, dear company name, hello, I am excited to apply at your company as an economy designer. I've loved you know, all the games that they make. Uh, I would love to be at a par part of improving this series. All right, I'm a good fit for your economy designer position due to my experience at Amazon Games building progression and engagement systems for Crucible. So this is just stating precisely what was already in my resume, but more succinctly, uh, help make sure that the recruiter understands this point. This involved coordinating three sets of engineers 
UI services and gameplay with UI artists, the store team, and other designers to deliver a battle pass and over 200 challenges and achievements. That's what I did on Crucible. Um, it's possible that it's tough to write some of this stuff into the resume. And so the cover letter is a good place to explain something that may have been in the 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 role in the role advertisement at the time um i wish that i had saved that that uh job posting so that i could show it here uh but you know i don't it was a year and a half ago i don't have it anymore but um i guarantee you that that the reason i decided to discuss this segment about coordinating with multiple sets of engineers is that there was something in the job posting that said this is something that we really want from our from you know from applicants job requirements also imply see i say also here implying that this is this is something that uh was in the job requirements they also imply technical aptitude is necessary for the role my engineering experience positions me well to be successful in this facet of the role thank you very much for your consideration i'm looking forward to the interview process that's it. These should be not anxiety inducing, not difficult. You can spend, you know, two minutes banging one of these out. Um, just look at the, the role requirements and then look at your resume and draw lines between them and then put that in a piece of paper. And that's your cover letter. Easy and done. Okay, let's talk about portfolios. Uh, portfolios, to be quite honest with you, in the video game industry are generally uh, a crapshoot. Okay, there are uh, a friend of mine who's a game designer pointed out to me there are some design roles that portfolios are appropriate for. In fact, they're probably required. So UX, uh, maybe level design, maybe narrative design, this, these these sorts of things where they that it, you can evaluate uh, the person's work from a portfolio. But for combat design, systems design, content design, uh, you know, progression economy design. Uh, not only is the hiring manager not going to be evaluating your portfolio, um, your design skill from your portfolio, it's probably not even possible for them to do that. So just to rephrase that, uh, a, a hiring manager for like a combat or systems designer role is not going to be looking at your portfolio and evaluating you as a designer based on that that's a critical thing that i feel like most uh, uh junior designers uh, miss when they're assembling their portfolio so what that means is you don't have to go into a lot of detail in here you don't have to put polish on your portfolio design page you don't have to have a lot of graphs and 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 show very specifically what you did break it down that might be more appropriate for a level design or ux um sort of portfolio uh, but but for combat systems, um, really what you need to be focusing on is the how and why at a very high level. Because what this is going to be used for is uh, the interviewer reading this is going to get a, um, a, a sense of what your specific contributions to the project were as a kicking off point for the questions that they're going to then interrogate you as part of the interview, right? So the point is not to go deep as part of the portfolio, it's to provide context at a high level. What were your specific contributions to the project and why did you make uh, some of the decisions that you made in just a few words? Um, and perhaps what are the overall uh, design goals uh, of the system and how did you approach that system? Um, you can keep it very short. Videos are very good if you want to. You can make a video that is like a quick run through of all the features of your game that just describes very briefly, 30 seconds, um, the features of your game. But you don't even need to go through all that amount of work. It can be even like, hey, I found a famous YouTuber that streamed the game that I was making and you go dig up that video and, and throw it onto your private YouTube channel and then they can just watch 20 seconds of the game and understand basically how the game works so that they can launch into questions during the interview. 
So now let's talk about Portfolio Review, which is an event that will sometimes rarely take place for a systems designer, combat designer, stuff like that. It's more common for UX designers, sometimes even a level designer, to have a Portfolio Review. And especially for UX designer, the process of portfolio review is much more standard. There's a huge technology industry that you know employs UX people and they do portfolio reviews a lot. Uh, so I'm not gonna be covering that here. If you wanna learn more about that, you can type UX design portfolio review into Google and there are, like, there are plenty of resources for you to learn about that. Um, and it almost doesn't even matter, but b because there is such a small representation of studios that will ask for you to do a portfolio review, um, and the way that they evaluate that is, you know, very, very, uh, it, it's going to be different from place to place. Uh, so the thing that I would recommend that you focus on for these is to think about um, not about how you're being evaluated as, as a designer, but how you're being evaluated in your presentation style and speaking and communication ability. As you know, being a game designer, it is a communication heavy uh, role. I don't know why they gave it to me because it takes me eight takes to make one of these shots of, of this video. Uh, it's definitely I have something I have to work out a lot. And so the way I prepare for these is just to work on my presentation ability and speaking ability. The, you, the way you do now is practiced skill. And, uh, and that is probably the main skill that they're going to be evaluating. Um, they, and they may drill in and ask you some questions about the, the portfolio, so, so you should be prepared for that. But unless it's a UX, specifically a UX design position, I think you're likely to get a lot less of that because the way to evaluate uh, uh, a systems or combat or economy or something like a core designer, or a content designer, or something like that, is to um, is to do interview questions with them, which we're going to get to, and it might even be the next video. We're coming up on it soon. We're going to do it soon. All right, I want to talk about game design tests, and I will, but that'll have to be for the next video. We'll start with game design tests in the next video, and uh, to close this video out, I have a question from uh, from a viewer. Um, should I just make indie games? So the argument is, uh, why bother going on a big team? Given the things that I said in previous video about how the game industry can be hard, you know, it, it can be a difficult industry to be in. Why not just make indie games for yourself? And it's a good point. I, in fact, did that. I did that for quite a long time, you know, from essentially since I was really young, you know, I started making games when I was like eight or 10. And um, until I got my first uh, AAA job at Amazon at age 30, um, I just did indie games. And there is a lot to be said about making indie games. Um, you really have to be in touch with the player making indie games. It is much more difficult to silo yourself off and only focus on one thing. Um, in order to be successful at indie games you have to be hyper focused on what is the player experience in a way that you just don't really have to do at a large company where you're segmented off from from concerns like that often um and uh and you can you can learn a lot of skills about uh you know multitasking and this sort of thing you get to work on a lot of different things you get to work on 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 every single part of the game um, but there, I feel, is a strong argument for working as part of a team, and it is that if the larger the team you work on, the more likely there's it's going to be that there's a smart person next to you. And the more likely there is a smart person next to you, the more likely you are to learn from to learn to learn things in general. And so, in 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 general, when I look for a company that I want to work for. I try to find a place where I'm the stupidest person in the room, where it's just a room full of really smart and interesting people, uh, very kind people that I can learn from, and and that makes me a better person. And that is a difficult environment to get on a small team, on an indie team. I learned more in the first few years uh, that I was working for Amazon that I had learned in many years before that because I just hadn't been exposed to all the, you know, game developers. They argue with each other constantly and they're constantly trying to prove themselves wrong in order to learn. 
And when you just get to walk in and they tell you all the things that they've learned, uh, you know, how valuable is that? It's, it's, it's phenomenal. And you don't have that opportunity if you don't put yourself in that situation where you're learning from those other people. So, um, so there can be benefits, uh, but they are both valid ways of making games. So as the kids like to say these days, uh, you do you. We're going to leave it right there. Next time we're going to talk about game design tests, I, I, uh, just very briefly. And then we're going to move on to uh, interview questions. Everybody's favorite topic, I think. I think that's what we're going to do next time. See you then. Wait, no, one more thing. Uh, please uh, press that like button and subscribe to the channel. The algorithm forces me to say this. I'm sorry, but you, you got to do it. If you like the videos, it's like basically the law and uh, I appreciate it.